when we look at our economy today, before we even talk about cybercrime, let's look at the opportunities that are bound that we seem to lose out on and we miss out on, but a handful of people are making good. The opportunities that are there for us on the internet as a nation, are we tapping into it the correct way? All right, thank you. Um, I would say no, not yet. Um, the opportunities on the internet are so vast. Um, this is what I do on a daily basis, and I can see that it has a huge opportunity. Um, there's a website called Internet Statistics website. If you visit that website, Nigeria has the tenth largest internet users population, according to the website. Um, there are about, about 48 million internet users generally on that particular website. Tenth is not bad, is it? No, it's not. That's a very good figure. That's a very good number. Considering NEPA, NEPA all the yes. challenges. Internet to access it, the, the price we pay to access yes. the internet, internet and all that, NEPA, I mean, which is still very expensive. Highly expensive. If you compare it to the rest of the world. Yeah. So, so tenth is a very good figure. So it shows you that there are a lot of potentials. Um, I, I was speaking to a, a company, that, uh, a South African company, that came into Nigeria to launch an e-commerce site. And I was asking the young man, I said, uh, with all the negative news about Nigeria, or the negative things we hear, why are you guys coming? What's giving you the confidence? Mm -hmm. You know, and the guy looked at me with this smile, this look on his face. You guys don't know the opportunity you have. <laughs> he said, the opportunity here is so huge. And he said, this is just the beginning. That from his research, I mean, he brought out his laptop and he showed me some, some quality research. I said, from his research, that Nigeria mobile population is still going to grow higher. I mean, if you look about, at about 48 million, let, let's take the figure for, for, for example, mm -hmm. it's still, that's, that's still about 30% of the population, thereabout. You know, so it means that the, the, the opportunities are there. And uh, part of what I do as a trainer, as a digital media consultant, is that I encourage businesses because the cost of businesses, b doing business is, is on a rise. So what you need to do, you need to look at ways that technology can help you to cut down on the cost. So the opportunities are, are there. Are we maximizing as, as a nation? I would say no. For example, the e-commerce boom that we're experiencing now, uh, while we have Nigerians on the internet, on the on uh, various e-commerce, uh, their own various e-commerce sites, they're not making the most of it. If you if you go to some sites, we're just discussing while waiting. There's, some, there's a particular e-commerce site I won't want to mention the name, but everywhere you see them, I mean these are owned by these are South Africans, even though they have Nigerians on board. But the truth of the matter is that it's a South African origin, and they are here. Every moment they are doing advertising, they're doing all sorts of adverts, and they, they, they are, they're probably maybe not making the money now. Because it, there's a lot of the challenges, distribution challenges, payment challenges. So there's a lot of challenges. But, but you know the innovation they came up with? Pay on delivery. That was a good innovation. So don't worry, just shop. We we'll bring to your doorstep, then you pay. pay it has its own risk, but that's what they're doing, right? Um, we're going to have more internet access. And that will mean more cyber crime. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Now, tell us, what kind of cyber crimes are... Should I say available? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of cyber crime do people carry out? Yeah. All right, uh, thanks. Um, I, I basically say this very, very straight up. Uh, people should understand that the internet is as, as important as, for instance, your passport. The internet, we call it the online real estate. It, it's, a, it's, it's so important that you have to take care of it. Uh, so it means that your, your passwords, your, your, your credit cards, your, your credit information, your account information... These are all things you have to take care sacred. of. Sacred. I mean, you have to keep them very, very sacred. Mm -hmm. And um, so, for, 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 for based on my experience as a trainer and as a consultant, I usually tell people something as simple as your, it starts with your password. Because virtually every website will require that you, put it, you enter your password. So I start, I said, why do you like using very simple passwords? 1920 Fred or Fred 1980, you know, with the date of birth. So this, 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 you don't understand that the people who are perpetrating cybercrime are very smart people. Uh, unfortunately, they, they are extremely smart. So uh, they will just pick up your Facebook, your Twitter, and your, maybe your Gmail, Yahoo. Mm -hmm. They can guess, yeah. make some very good guesses. And so it starts with the password. You have to use very secure passwords across the Internet. And you have to ensure that you don't re re repeat the same password on, on, on two sites. So it has to be each site should have a very unique password. How do you and it should remember be, all that? Well, it should be, it should be alphanumeric. Um, now, now before, before I answer that, your password should be alphanumeric. That means it should contain letters, numbers, and then symbols. Mm -hmm. So it makes it difficult. But you see, there are a lot of tools to do that. Um, we're just talking about cloud computing, cloud technology, how it's growing. If you ask me, I use a free, free tool um, called LastPass, LastPass.com. It's a free tool. And LastPass, I mean, personally, I have over a 1,000 accounts. 
and they are all alphanumeric passwords. So there is no way on earth so I can remember a thousand passwords. They're all unique. All unique. But I managed it with lastpass.com. So I just remember one master password that I change frequently. And also, everybody who owns an account on the internet should at least try to change your account once in a month. Or change your password. Your password, sorry. Mm -hmm. Once in a month or once in two weeks. But minimum of once in a month will be fine. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. because, because um, for instance, if a group of hackers hack into, say, Facebook, for instance, they can get access or hold f uh, for a line of password. That you can use to enter those accounts. So if you don't do that regularly, you can fall victim. And it cuts across. For instance, let, let me give an, uh, an example of another cyber crime I experienced personally. My website was hacked, and the guy ins the guys inserted some codes on my website. So if you visit my website, it will automatically download those codes on your on your system on your laptop, and then it will start stealing your secret information, your account information, your credit card information, your date of birth, your your, your pictures. You know, and, and 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 the funny thing about the kind of um, uh, cyber crime that is going on now is so smart and so powerful that it can take a hold of your PC. I mean, you have your computer, it's booting, you can see your computer, but behind it is a guy working on it. Honestly, I mean, you're there, you're seeing it. You might, you might even be doing some work, but the guy is also doing some work accessing every single information you have on your system. So part of what people need to do is that you need to start looking at having software that um, lock, my, lock my PC on your on your system, software that can erase your 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 data remotely if you have to, on your phone, on your tablets, on your PCs. This is a must for everybody who is carrying gadgets today, mm -hmm. because you can lose your phone immediately, and somebody can get into your phone, and the person can wreak havoc with your with with with, with, with most of the things that you have. I mean, there's a guy in a um, okay, there's a guy in, 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 somewhere, an, an editor. And his uh, iCloud account was hacked. Before the guy knew what was happen happening, the guy deleted every single information he had on the internet. From his Facebook to his Yahoo, he deleted everything. And guess what? He wrote him a personal email and told him that if he doesn't speak, he's going to tell him how he did it. And he, uh, the, guy, the guy agreed that he would report him to the police in the US. And he told him everything, step by step, how he performed the hack. Brilliant hack. Very brilliant. When a cybercrime is committed, we probably go to EFCC or go to the police. Do you think that our securities themselves are adequately informed and trained about these crimes which we expect them to investigate and solve for us? No. Mm. Mm, there's no two ways about it, no. Because, I mean, if you, for instance, if you want to uh, pin somebody down who is into cybercrime, You've got to know exactly what he's doing. You've got to have an idea of what he's doing. So uh, I would say no. Uh, and I'll give you a typical example. Um, one of my, my, my consultants, my, my friend's mentor and, consult, and their mentor, I consult for him, Madisa Muhabunwa. He had his Yahoo account hacked some time ago. And the, the person who hacked the account, um, first of all, deleted all his private questions, changed everything. So he, there was no way he can claim ownership of the account any longer. Uh, so that account was lost. You know what the guy did? Just like you, ex you, you mentioned, he started sending everybody emails that Mazi was in trouble. And because people know him, a lot of people were almost responding mm -hmm. until he got to know. Now, in that case, the people who did, who, I mean, who performed that, that were certainly close by. You know, they were certainly close by. I, I think he made effort. He called Yahoo. He made some effort and, and, and um, nothing happened. What it simply means is that the people who are supposed to enforce this law need training. I mean, if they even have to learn the principles of hacking, then so be it, because you can't catch a criminal if you don't understand what he's doing. And the hackers, you, I mean, they are very, most times, gentle people. Um, I mean, it's not shown on their faces, very cool guys, you know, cool ladies, very cool people. And they do this thing. So for our security agents to be able to tackle this, they've got to undergo some bit of training. They've got to understand how it works. Because the truth of the matter is that it is a very, I mean, it works like a speed of light. I mean, very, very, I mean, we're sitting down here, finding what's happening, the guys in your account, finding what's happening, just like it's mentioned about a politician. Somebody can go into your account and mess up everything. I mean, just imagine a Facebook account of a pro prominent politician reads something, and the guy says, how do you not explain it wasn't me? I mean, it's difficult. The, the, by then, the, the deed is done. So, it, it, this cuts across everybody. Government, and just like, just like one mentioned, the internet... It's going to cause a very massive revolution in this country. I tell people everywhere, um, whether we accept it or not, 
whether we like or not, whether we, we believe in it or not, it will happen today at some it, point. it's happening. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it is um, our children, our families, our fathers, everybody is going on the internet. Yeah, sure. And there has to be regulation. It is very important. I'll give you an instance. Uh, uh, apart from the home security uh, that is in charge, the FCC in the US is also doing a lot. Yeah. For instance, you can't send me unsolicited mail if I don't accept. The FCC will find you for that if I report the FCC. So every email provider, for example, has what is called the, the, the FCC Act. You have to send emails to only people who, are, who have accepted to receive that emails. That, they, they came up with the idea because they understand that one of the ways to perpetrate cybercrime is emails. Send an email. Yeah, how come spam is still so rampant? Yes, because that that's, that's just shows you that that's, that's cybercrime. Um, the, the email providers are spending billions of dollars to fight spam. And it keeps coming out because all, all you need to do is sit down with a, with a it's, it's called Blaster. I mean, there are different names for it. And the Blaster can blast one million emails in a sec. One second. One million emails. So, I mean, how are you going to do that? And the guy can sit down there. Before you know what's happening, he has blasted over a hundred million emails in a day or two. And they are all owned by people. So, part of the, what you should do as, as somebody... Uh, I usually tell people, never click on any link from your email address. Never. Except you are 100% sure. If you're not sure, don't click. Mm. Copy and paste it's on your browser. Okay. That is much better. Because the, the, the process of clicking it drops in the, the, the code or the malware or the spyware into your system. So these are some basic security measures you should take as a human. Now, it, it, whether you are a politician, whether you're a banker, whether you're a, a, a journalist or expert, every, it cuts across everybody. You have an image to protect online, and it's your duty to start protecting it now. Yes, uh, um, from, for me, my role as a digital media consultant, I will say this. Um, I, I'm going to talk about parents now and social media. I think what parents should do in terms of security is that parents should start understanding what their children do on the internet. And one of the things they can do is that they can become, they should become their, their children's friends online. They should try as much as possible because that's the next area where we're going to see a lot of crime. A lot of children, God forbid, are going to get molested, are going to get, a lot of things are going to happen yeah. via social media. So I, I think I should I, I encourage and advise parents to be more conscious on who their children interact with on social media, what they do on social media. Um, but you see, because most parents are not understanding as it were, Kids don't don't add their parents as friends. Mm. So parents must understand that times have changed. You can't bring your 1940 strategy to 2012. <laughs> it can work. <laughs> this is the jet internet age. It has yeah. come to stay. So parents, please understand what your children do on, on online and try to understand. You can't stop them. I've been to meetings and trainings where parents ask me, "What can we do?" Our children is always holding phone on Facebook. I say, parents, there is nothing you can do. It has come to stay. So what you can do now as a parent is to understand what your children do on social media and try to be their friends. Okay, thank you, thank you very much.